Last night, I did not sleep till late. Then I began, so the servants tell me, to cry out, to laugh, to chortle and chuckle in my sleep. I do not remember that. I remember I woke before dawn to find a light more brilliant than any day filling the room, its glare so strong my eyes watered at it, my throat burned and my skin was parched. It was as if the sun was shining there where I'd been sleeping, as if God's own voice rang clear in the brightness of heaven. He told me then to dance to him, to lift up my heart and sing, to be like God himself, feminine as well as masculine, bride and beloved both. I am Cadmus. This city, which fifty years ago I founded, is called Thebes. I was a young man. I could not guess what life held for me. I consulted the oracle at Delphi. God spoke through his sacred priestess. He instructed me to build a city here upon rock, where spring water issues from the earth. I did this. I killed the serpent which protected the spring. I killed it. Its teeth became seed. I sowed them into the ground at the command of God, and they burst open under my feet and rose to life as men. I remember this. I saw it with my own eyes. I had no son. Long years ago, my eldest daughter, Semele, died in fire. Some say that she was struck by lightning as she lay in the open sleeping on a hot night in midsummer. She was a virgin, untouched by any man. Some say, however, that she bore a son. Zeus came to her by night. He took her as a lover and planted inside her a miraculous boy, a golden celestial child. When told by Zeus that he was king of heaven, Semele did not dare to believe him. For proof, God swore a sacred oath to do whatever thing she required of him. Oh, let me see you then, radiant, divine, seen as you are seen in heaven. Her body ignited. It became molten light. It burned like the morning star. One thing alone of her was left. Within her womb, a child unborn, untouched by flame, Dionysus, God's own beloved son, the only God not born in heaven. These stories were circulated often thirty years ago. I will not say that I believed them. I am an old man now, tired, forgetful, frequently ill. I abdicated from the throne. I gave the crown to Pentheus, my grandson. Pentheus was born to Agave, my second daughter, whose husband had died young. He took power, boldly, unsqueamishly, with both hands. He laid hold of the priests, the medicine men, and those who make grain by magic, and either killed them or banished them. He knew he could not be supreme while these powers remained beneath him, but not subject to his command. He has condemned the stories of Semele's death as lies or blasphemous fantasies. She held in her arms not Zeus, but a mortal man. Her child was a bastard, not the son of God. At first the people obeyed him. They spoke in his voice, 
saying it is apt and fit that we put away these ancient things. Such superstition is fit only for a nation of slaves, women and children. Women, slaves, children. These, in their oppression, are heavy with dreams, knowing that they must live like fruit that is eaten. Their minds create a language of longing which finds no expression in action. It is a call not of will, but of need, a plea to be heard by the power of a god. Dionysus has returned. He is here. He is real. He comes whispered, half heard, glimpsed, not openly seen, rumored, expected, yearned for in prayer, as saviour, as perfect incarnate God. At night I hear the voices of women. They are singing. Dionysus has heard them. In the secrecy of their prayer, he answers and is there. High upon the summit of Mount Kithiron, in wild and desolate places, they have sought him and found him in the water which has changed its nature and become wine in the hot red blood of the grape, made holy by divine ecstasy. In the frenzy of deliverance, which is the sister of madness. We need to see him at once. Immediately. The king is already returning to the city. Say to me what you wish me to say to him. Be brief and be plain. Then, briefly and plainly, religious mania is spreading through Thebes like fire. The smell of disorder is in everyone's nose. Violence, rebellion follows. This may happen very soon if prompt action is not taken by the crown. The king knows there has been trouble. Reports have been dispatched to him, as is usual. But you know the king. He will not be happy until he has taken charge of the situation personally. Let us wait calmly and patiently for the king to return. In my opinion, this fire, as you call it, is too violent to burn for long. You know that the seven gates of Thebes stand open, that the guards in the garrison abandon their weapons, that they sing hymns to heaven like women and children. Can you stop them? Can the king? Can anyone? Welcome, sir. Welcome back to Thebes, Welcome. my lord. Welcome. I leave my city for a brief, well-merited holiday. I return and everywhere there is anarchy. And you dare to say welcome to me! Listen! Listen to it! There's singing and dancing in the fields. Every tree, every cottage door is hung with flowers. Everywhere, rising like smoke, hymns to Dionysus. Everywhere, the jangling of pipe, tabor, tambourine, flute. The people, naked in the hot sun, no guilt, no shame, addled with wine. The stink of incense, the age-old smell of heat and sex. As I rode toward the city, I met some of these revelers, idling under a tree, laughing for no reason. I shouted, why are you not working? Have you no trade or profession? Do shuttle and loom turn to an industry of their own? Is corn gathered in without the help of men? It was a time when their bowels would have opened for fear. There's more. High in the mountains, little covens of God-struck women perched among rocks like birds, squatting on their haunches, their unkempt hair flowing free, living, sleeping in the open. Only the shade of the heavy pine keeps the weather off them, dreaming of Dionysus. The god, the dancing boy, what sort of man is he then? This gypsy from the Orient, this Dionysus, this sweet-smelling youth with his long-scented hair, who thinks he can take the city of Thebes without risking his body in combat? Sir, this is God. Meaning? They think that God has come home. Meaning? They are saying God was born here. God has come back to Thebes. Here, heaven touched a mortal woman with fire, and she gave birth to a saviour, to a, a divine son. They're saying he's here, we've seen him. 
They are saying milk has poured from rock at the touch of his arm. He can turn stones into bread, water into wine.